Good morning, Facebook. We're just waiting for it. Good morning, Instagram. Hi, everybody. Happy Coffee Talk Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about influencer marketing. We're going to give you guys some examples and play a little video. If anybody's heard of a movie called Fake Famous, we're going to talk about that. A lot of people <clears throat> kind of have a negative um, connotation of influencer marketing, but done the right way, it can be, good morning, thanks for joining, good morning, thanks for joining. Uh, done the right way, it really is uh, can be great for business. So we're going to talk about that today. Hi, Judy, thanks for joining. Okay, so... Um, First, we're going to start off, and then we're going to play you guys a little bit, a little video. All right. Good morning. Thanks for joining, everybody. Hope you guys are having a good Tuesday. So the question is, could influencer marketing bring you, uh, you know, more business? Um, wondering how to incorporate influencers into your marketing strategy. A lot of people wonder if it's worth it, and how do you do it? So we're going to talk about that today. You know, we can't afford Kim Kardashian, right? Who's like a half a million dollars for just a, like a one post and a tweet. Um, but there are other influencers out there that can actually help you in your social circle to increase your brand awareness and to bring you um, brand ambassadors. And we're going to talk about that. So why should businesses, good morning, thanks for joining. Why should businesses consider influencer marketing? Uh, when the mainstream media talks about influencers, they tend to have them in a negative light, right? They think about influencers as people who take selfies and share photos of their food and extravagant lifestyles to gain followers on social media. But um, there's actually a documentary out there, and I'm going to show you guys a clip of it. It's called Fig Famous, where this New York Times writer, Nick uh, Bil Bilton, he's a technology writer, and um, he did an experiment with three people who he wanted to be famous. So he, uh, they actually interviewed all these people and they picked three just ordinary Joes and um, they bought them followers and they bought them followers through bots. So you can buy followers and you can buy engagement through bots, right? Doesn't cost a lot of money, a couple hundred dollars, but you have to keep up with it. And one of the three actually stuck with it and started getting brand deals because she had so many followers. They were all paid paid for. She had one that was, you should see, it's called Fake Famous, and she actually got a deal where she had a completely expense-paid trip. Um, you know, the flight, the everything, all, all, all expense-paid. I'm going to show you guys a little clip. So for Facebook, I'm bringing it up on Facebook. We'll play it. Okay, and um, for Instagram, I will turn it around for you guys. Just give me a second. Oops, shoot. Ah. Sorry about that, guys. I dropped you. Let me turn it around. Okay. I'll start playing it. Oops, move that for your Facebook people. Now people get on a plane, fly to LA, and go to a pink wall to take selfies. In fact, that pink wall is one of LA's top tourist destinations. Can Written about in everything from photos to travel and leisure, and is cited on more lists of places to snap an Instagram photo than most tourist destinations on the entire planet. People come here from all over the world just to take a picture. Families do it. Locals do it. You see these women? They're from England and they paid $2,000 each to come here on an Instagram vacation just to take a photo against a flat pink wall. Why? What are they looking for? That's easy. They're looking for this, likes, which translates to more followers, which is the current currency of the most important thing on earth today. What everyone seems to be obsessed with, they want to be famous.
Okay, so that's the introduction to Fake Famous. I actually didn't know about that wall, <laughs> but now I do. Um, so let me get you guys back. Let's put you back in my holder. Hold on. If you guys have ever seen my setup, you know that I have an Instagram uh, holder for my phone while I go live on my phone. Yeah, me neither, right, Tracy? Now when you go out to LA, now you know to go to the wall so you can be just as famous. So, um, yeah, please check out that movie. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. But not all influencing is bad, right? So, um, so um, the question becomes, how can I influence a specific audience, right? This could be advertising, public relations, traditional media, new media, Instagram, YouTube, public lobbying, people online, offline. Um, so you have to think about your audience and smaller influencers, right? Um, so according to an Edelman Trust barometer, no first no style, thanks for joining. 74% of people surveyed said they don't look at advertisements, but 63% said they trust influencers, influencers, easy for me to say, for product recommendations, right? So just think about that. 63% said they trust influencers for product recommendations. And you'll find an entire world of influencers out there on every platform, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, They've cultivated audiences that love and respect them and trust them for their opinion on certain things, um, particularly products and services within their area of expertise. Um, so when these creators recommend a product, their audience takes action. It's very powerful. And these people get paid for it. So finding the right kind of influencer for your campaign. So. An influencer basically is anyone who can persuade <clears throat> an audience to take action. Um, say you're in line at a uh, grocery store and you hear someone, two people in front of you talking about a product. You're going to think twice about that product or you're going to actually buy that product if you've been thinking about that. That's how influencer marketing works and it works the same way on social, right? There are um, people who have podcasts with hundreds of thousands of readers and listeners who trust them for their expertise, and they provide, uh, they have an influence over this audience. Um, there's also celebrities, like I talked about before, like Kim Kardashian, but you know, they're incredibly expensive, literally. You'll pay her a half a million dollars for one post and a tweet, which is unbelievable, but you know, the kind of um, ripple effect that will get for that product is amazing. So we're gonna talk about a couple different types of influencer marketing campaigns. The first one illustrates how a single influencer with a modest audience can have an impact on business. And this is an example from UBS, a financial service. They were looking for an opportunity to get the word out about their annuity products. And they found someone called Martin Bamford who worked in finance and hosted a podcast. He didn't have a lot of followers on social, but his podcast was getting a few thousand downloads per month. So UBS found his audience very appealing because they were interested in financial content for their financial management. And so UBS pitched uh, Martin on hosting one of their executives, just hosting the executive, okay? After that podca podcast appearance, UBS was able to track a four time increase in leads to their website, um, asking questions about annuities. And all that was, was an interview, okay? The effect, thanks for joining. The effect of a single podcast with influence over a hyper-targeted audience interested in that particular type of financial product, and that's the kind of results you can have. All right, that wasn't necessarily saying, hey, buy this product, we're gonna talk about annuities. He just knew that that was a target audience, and so he interested them in a conversation. That's pretty powerful. The next example illustrates how influence marketing um, can come to life. Um, 
It's a launch of a campaign called We Are Proof for University of Kentucky Healthcare. Yeah. Part of the kickoff campaign was a two minute brand film that debuted on Facebook. And the challenge was how to get maximum organic exposure for the film. So uh, one facet of the strategy was to use online influencers to boost organic reach. But because the geographic footprint was central Kentucky, <laughs> someone with 150 fo Instagram followers, um, even if that person happened to be from Lexington, Kentucky, wasn't necessarily going to help the case, right? Instead, they opted to go with 43 local influencers who had some degree of online influence, um, like food influencers, local shopping influencers. They also looked to see who had influence over the community, like political, um, like politicians, the mayor, the president of the Urban League, a popular dentist, a music director at the Presbyterian Church. These are really like offbeat kind of thinking outside the box, right? But in Kentucky, this is who the influencers were. So then to add a layer of influence marketing onto strategy, they previewed the film the day before the release to 10,000 University of Kentucky healthcare employees and asked for their help in getting the word out. Their strategy was to get all three audiences of people, employees, online influencers, and influential people offline to like, comment, and share the film and tell their UK healthcare story to send the right signals to the Facebook algorithm. Within 24 hours, the video received 40,000 views. After 30 days, it had more than 800,000 views. Uh, let me just get my people on Facebook. Hi, Fred. Thanks so much. Andrew Reese, good morning. By asking people to tell their story, they were also able to capture enough content to develop a microsite off of the UK healthcare site for other people to tell their stories dealing with the brand. That's pretty impressive, right? So if you're asking yourself, I'm interested in partnering with influencers for your campaign, ask yourself, who am I trying to influence? It could be in your community and most likely it is, right? So think about your community and who you can employ right in your backyard. All right, so those are two great, those are two really great examples. Um, to now using online tools to find and connect with influencers. Okay, you could always pay for things, right? Um, there's databases and solutions to let you search for relevant keywords and get lists of influencers, along with insights that will help you evaluate them. It's just a matter of finding one uh, that fits your budgets and needs. Oh, I wanted to mention something too. When in Fake Famous, okay, when he was buying all of the bots, to buy the followers and buy the uh, engagement that goes with the followers. Um, there's actually also programs that can um, evaluate that influencer to see if the followers are real, okay? Are my followers all the way from India and not real in my US market? Or are my followers real and they're actually brand ambassadors? So there is programs that large companies will use to see if you are a quote unquote real influencer or not, or if you've bought all of your followers and engagement. There's a couple tools you can use, right? One is IZEA, I-Z-E-A, has an influence discovery tool. It runs about $140 a month, which makes it more accessible for smaller businesses. They also offer more expensive managed services where you can provide a creative brief and they do the work for you. There's also one called Upfluence, which is an influencer marketing platform. It has a higher price point. Um, you should really contact them for a quote. They also offer a handy free browser plugin that will analyze the performance of an Instagram influencer's profile. And that's what I was just talking about. So it will tell you if it's a real influencer or not. Um, you can go to the person's profile and click on the flyout. 
um, because you don't want to be paying for somebody that's not a real influencer, right? There's also Dovetail. That offers an extensive database on uh, influencers. It runs around three to four hundred dollars per month. Um, so there's lots of different software and companies you can contact to find influencers for your particular product, and it may be worth it for you. You could also hire a consultant agency like Stark Media Group. Uh, you want okay? There's a couple of them. So Pocket Change Invest. There's IZEA, I Z E A. There's Upfluence, U P F L U E N C E, and there's Dovetail. All right, so you can look up <clears throat> you can look up all of those. You can also hire a consultant as an agency. We can help you find influencers, and we can help you with influence marketing. And then you can also propose a partnership with an influencer. We have influencers here on the North Fork. Um, that and in particular fields in particular areas that we already know we can hook you up with um, so oh sorry about that uh, you welcome pocket change invest um, the smaller the influence audience the more likely they are to reach out to you and ask you for a partnership that's right that's right Tracy Kessler um, she is an influencer on the North Fork we've actually done some work with her um, so if you're interested in Tracy Kessler, uh, you can reach out to us and we can hook you up with her. Um, so <clears throat> then, uh, hold on. So I'm talking about, uh, influencers, partnership with influencers. Um, you can always reach out to influencers. Uh, we have actually reached out to other influencers and sometimes they're tough to get in with, you know? Um, they're looking for specific things for their own brand, but most of the time they're looking for, you know, money or products or things like that. So, um, it's important to know your goals and your metrics and what you want to do with them. Uh, the influencer that you're going to pick also needs to demonstrate that they can move the needle for you. So you need to ask them to provide some proof points from previous similar engagements to make sure that you are forming a good partnership, you're not wasting your money, and that the time and money you're investing is gonna go somewhere. So make sure that once you contact them, they can actually prove that they're going to be able to help you with your product. And you need to have confidence that your results are gonna be worth the money, right? There are plenty of people out there who are trying to be influential but don't really have the engagement level to persuade their audience to take the action. So when you look at their previous engagements with brands and the things that they've done with their audiences, you can see which one drives action and which one just is like a post and hope, right? So make sure you do your research on your influencer marketer as well. The last thing I wanna say is you have to measure your influence marketing results. With any type of marketing, you have to plan your measure uh, you have to plan to measure your influence marketing performance. When you're starting to build your strategy, define your goals, and determine how you're going to capture that information that tells you that you're getting close to accomplishing, accomplishing that goal or making progress along the continuum. So like what I gave the example with the UBS, after they did that podcast, they were actually able to measure a four-time increase into their website traffic. So make sure that you are going to um, make sure that you're going to be able to measure um, some sort of um, rebound after you've hired this uh, influencer. Uh, there's also things like social listening tools out there. Um, they can be very expensive, but if you're looking for for a way to listen to the chatter about your brand you can also invest in a social listening tool, which we've actually looked into those. You can also use TweetDeck. I don't know if you guys know, TweetDeck came out years and years ago, but that's something to look into too. You can go onto TweetDeck, which is free, and you can put in your hashtags or hashtags that you use for your brand and your brand. You can set up columns, and anytime somebody talks about your brand or uses your hashtag, it pops up. So TweetDeck is a great way, a great social listening tool to uh, listen for your brand. I highly, I highly recommend it. 
So um, you need to look for, you know, performance indicators um, and uh, how these influencers are, in, are increasing your brand awareness. Um, so if you're considering influencer marketing, give us a call. We can help you. Like I said, there are certain um, tools out there that you can use to hire an influencer, or you can look in your backyard. Say, so who am I trying to influence and where can I find people in my community um, that do influence people in my community? All right? Just takes a little elbow grease and it would be free for you. Sometimes you give away a product, but in, overall, that's not going to cost you a lot of money. So, um, you know, think about that. If you guys have any questions or are interested in influencer marketing, give Stark Media a call. We have definitely dealt with influencers and helped our audience, helped our clients before. Uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you missed any part of today's Coffee Talk Tuesday, you can always go to our YouTube channel and our IGTV. We always have them there. We are happy to entertain any questions that you have at info at starkmediany.com. Thank you so much for joining today. We hope you guys enjoyed today's influencer marketing talk. Um, and we hope you guys have a great uh, Tuesday. Remember, that movie is called Fake Famous, and it's very entertaining. I highly suggest it. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. Take care.